Namaste-sara-svati-deve-gaur-vani-pacharine-nirishesa-sunyavari-pasyati-tesa-tarine-chai-si-krishna-chaitanya-prabhu-nityananda-sriya-dvaita-gadadhar-sivasari-gaur-
Samo damos te pausaucham. Shanter arjivam evacha. Gyana vigyana mastikyam. Brahma karma svabhavajam. Translation Peacefulness, Self Control, Austerity, Purity, Tolerance, Honesty, Knowledge, Wisdom, and Religiousness. These are the natural qualities by which the Brahmanas work. So, here in this verse, Krishna names nine qualities, starting with peacefulness. And that when we are peaceful, you can naturally become self-controlled. And when you can become self-controlled, it becomes easy to perform, or more natural to perform austerities. Austerity is the principle which leads to bhakti. Without austerity, we stay on the material platform. So the purpose of austerity is to get us off the material platform, or we might say the bodily platform, and get us onto the spiritual platform. So in our Krishna conscious movements, austerity is a principle for elevation. And we, of course, we make the simple austerity, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. These are the four pillars of sinful activities which go on today in this world as ordinary events within society. People perform these things regularly. But the Shastras teach us that there are many types of sinful activities, but all of them are found within these four categories. So one who carefully restricts themselves, avoiding these four sinful activities can avoid all sinful activities. And by avoiding all sinful activities, one can start to perform activities which are elevating. Sinful activities bring our consciousness down and cause us to get an, a reaction which is, what we say, uh, negative or causes us to suffer. So austerity is such an important principle. And the process of devotional service is, is austerity, tapas, and tapas means austerity. Uh, denying certain bodily need, not needs necessarily, but bodily desires in order to focus on the transcendental or spiritual platform. Um, it says, by cultivation of philosophical knowledge, we learn the process of devotional service. We learn what to do and we learn what to avoid. But then again, knowledge leads to austerity, because when we learn the process of the knowledge, the knowledge just teaches you how to move in the spiritual direction by avoiding material activities. And through austerity, we can situate ourselves on the spiritual platform. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatmana Soshitina Kangshati Samasarvishu Bhuteshu Madbhakti Labhate Param, which is a spiritual platform. On the spiritual platform, there is no anxiety to achieve material things, nor is there any anxiety when one loses material things. And these are the two things that are permeating this material energy. People are anxious to achieve something, and when they don't achieve it, there is anxiety. Anxiety to get, anxiety to receive, and that benefit from whatever we get, or anxiety causing us to lose. But on the spiritual platform, there's no, there's no gain and loss. You simply perform activities, and those activities are always beneficial, even if they're done imperfectly. Still, because they're done under the direction of the spiritual master and for the pleasure of the Lord, the performance is not about excellence, although excellence is the desirable in the execution. In other words, we try to do things nicely. But even if they're not done perfectly or nicely, if there is a desire to please the Lord, that is transcendental, that is spiritual. It was an example 
that sometimes people can't cook and they're given the position to cook. But because they have bhakti, when they cook, the bhakti is felt by everyone who tastes the prasadam. Although the prasadam may not be up to the quality of standard, still because of the bhakti, it is accepted. Because bhakti is an element you can taste when you take prasadam. An example was Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he, he was always liked to get his chapatis nice and hot, right fresh from the fire. So Prabhupada was in New Vrindavan at the time, so one girl, she was asked to cook, she couldn't cook. But she had bhakti. <laughs> and she was burning the chapatis, <laughs> making big black marks in it. And Prabhupada was eating chapati after chapati. And the devotees were concerned that, that they weren't quality. Prabhupada said, no, this is very nice. Because he, the girl was giving all her heart to trying to please Prabhupada, although she wasn't able to come up to the quality, still the bhakti. And that's how bhakti were. In the material world, you got to get it right. If you don't get it right, then you, you're out. <laughs> but here, it's about trying to please the Lord or trying to please the Lord's devotees. And that's the austerity that helps us get to the transcendental platform. The transcendental platform means when we're situated regularly in activities of devotional service. Mam chayo vibhachirena bhakti yogena sevati sagunan samatityaintam brahmabhuyaya kalpate. That is the spiritual platform as described by Krishna, that when one is fixed in devotional service and doesn't fall down in any circumstance. Another quality here is mentioned is purity. Purity means cleanliness in this sense of the word. To keep everything clean, Prabhupada said externally and internally. Internally, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and reading and hearing transcendental scriptures, especially Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita brings internal cleanliness. And externally is to keep, you know, regularly bathe, keep oneself clean, keeps one's clothes clean, keep one's area clean, and especially keep the temple clean. And these are particular principles that are foremost in the process of cleanliness because sometimes they say cleanliness is next to godliness, but we don't say that. We say cleanliness is godliness. It's such a high principle in devotional service. And for those who are Brahmins, they practice two things foremost, truthfulness and cleanliness. These are the two most important things. So to actually to come to the standard of actual Brahminical cleanliness is a really, it takes time to learn that because the material world is, is by nature, nature dirty. <laughs> And so you have to keep cleaning, cleaning, cleaning on the external level and on the internal level. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning with regular sadhana, regular service like that. So cleanliness, Prabhupada was very strong on that. He said, keep everything clean in the temple. If you don't know how to clean, go home and live with your mother. She'll teach you. <laughs> so he was very strong on that point. <laughs> Um, in this age, there's four, uh, we, know, we know there's four ashrams. There's the Brahmachari, the Grihasta, Vanaprasta, and Sanya. So in the 12th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, talks about the symptoms of the age of Kali. And in, the, in that age, each of these ashrams have a particular defect, or what we say, anomaly. So in the age of Kali, the defect in the Grihasta ashram is they fail to give in charity. <laughs> it's a regular duty for Grihastas to give in charity to religious movements, religious principles. Uh, for the Vanaprastha, of course, Vanaprastha described in this particular age cannot be followed according to the Vedic system. Vana means forest and prasta means dweller. So to dwell in the forest, but Prabhupada said this is not practical in this age, no one can live in forests. <laughs> so Vanaprasta in this age means pretty much to go to a holy place and live out one's life in worshiping the deity there, free from the encumbrances of family responsibilities. And so, and so that's 
That's one of the failures and people will not go into the forest, that's what it says. And for the sannyas, sannyasis will keep wealth. Prabhupada said to the grihasis, if you need any money, just go to the sannyasis. <laughs> and that still works today too. So. <laughs> So, but that's not the point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so to, for sannyasis to keep wealth is a, is a as anomaly, it's a discretion from the... Uh, Prabhupada said, as soon as I get money, I spend it. Or I spend it even before it comes. <laughs> he would always be spending it on spreading Krishna consciousness. And for the brahmachari ashram, the... Digression, as it's mentioned in the Shastras in the twelfth canto, that brahmacharis are dirty. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> and so Prabhupada was one Prabhupada would sometimes like to go to Brahmachari ashrams and just to see what was the standard. So one time he was walking through one temple, they opened the door to the Brahmachari ashram and Prabhupada said, Brahmachari means dirty. <laughs> so try to avoid that. It's, ashram life really requires a lot of diligence in keeping things clean. Keep things clean, you keep things simple. Keeping things simple means just what you need to keep body and soul together and to execute your devotional service. To accumulate and collect too many things means it's hard to keep clean. So... Yeah, purity is important. Tolerance, that's a whole class in itself. We can speak about that. But I'll give you a statement by Srila Prabhupada, which I think is very important to hear, although we may not be up to the standard. Prabhupada said, one can understand... Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Mm, let me think, think of this, how Prabhupada phrased this. It's so interesting how he phrased it. Uh, mm -hmm. mm, it's really hard to phrase this. Um, <coughs> it ha it's understood that the quality of a person or the advancement of a person in spiritual life can be determined how much they can tolerate in disturbing situations. Hmm. In other words, one is understood how advanced they are by how much they can tolerate when their situations are intolerable. <laughs> in other words, that's a, that's a barometer for gauging uh, a person's spiritual progress. So tolerance is one of the highest qualities. Honesty, that speaks for itself. Knowledge means knowing the scriptures. Wisdom means be able to understand and how to apply that knowledge in day-to-day -day life and also be able to speak it and teach it. That is what wisdom means. And religiousness means to follow the principles as given by the Shastras and the practical execution of devotional service. That means the rules and regulations that we follow. So here, the verse ends, these are the natural, natural, the word natural is used, qualities by which the brahmanas work. So Prabhupada arranged for our society to be situated on the brahminical status. In other words, he wanted to train people to come up to the standard of brahminical life. And he said, if I can make a, a group of devotees Brahminically qualified, then we can spread Krishna consciousness everywhere. Because the Brahmin class is, is the saintly class, which knows the scriptures. There's, there's six qualifications or qualities that make a Brahminical life. One is, it's called Patan, Patan, Yajan, Yajan, Dana, Pratigraha. Patan, Patan, Patan means to know the scriptures. Patan means to be able to speak and teach those scriptures to others. In other words, to teach. Yajan, Yajan means to worship the deity and to be able to teach deity worship to others. Dana means charity, giving in charity, and Pratigraha means to accept charitable gifts. And these are the six main activities of a Brahmin. 
Of course, when you enter into devotional service, you are no longer considered within the varnas, you are considered Vaishnava. So Vaishnava means to work with Brahminical qualities and at the same time serve the Lord. If we are serving the Lord with the, mo with the qualities of passion and ignorance, then that service is tinged and it's not really acceptable. We have to understand what are these qualities, cultivate them and learn and practice them as the means to offer our service. And these are the qualities. Peacefulness, self-control means to control the mind and senses, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom and religiousness. So those who are Brahminical initiated, especially, but those who are practicing Krishna consciousness are meant to focus on these qualities and cultivate them along with the practice of devotional service. And each one of these qualities has many, many uh, parameters or di dimensions to it, which we can approach from different angles of vision. But these are the essential qualities like that. And out of the two, uh, cleanliness, and of course, um, Honesty really means truthfulness. A Brahmin is so truthful that even at the expense of his own self-interest, he'll tell the truth. Even if it jeopardizes his own self-interest, he'll tell the truth. Like that. So these are the qualities. And this, and then, as Krishna told Arjun, although Arjun was a fighter, he was a Kshatriya, he was a Grihastha, but Krishna told him to come to the mode of goodness. And what did that mean? That means work under the principle of trying to serve the Lord in such a way that the Lord is pleased, pleased by that, using these qualities as a means for executing your devotional service like that. Passion, uh, inattention, laziness doesn't fit into Krishna consciousness. We can't be lazy. Nobody likes a lazy person. You can't, even in the material world, if you're lazy, they throw you out. <laughs> because even in the material world, laziness is shunned on and, dis and discarded. So, especially in spiritual life, Prabhupada says, we have so many things to do. <laughs> we have so many projects to work on. We have so many mantras to chant. We have so we have our day is full. So that for a devotee, laziness doesn't fit. One time, one devotee asked Prabhupada, "Is laziness, uh, is laziness, uh, a demoniac quality?" Prabhupada said, "No, it's below that, because <laughs> the demons are very not lazy. <laughs> so it's." So that word lazy, then when Prabhupada was opening the temple and anybody would come into it, our door and want to become a devotee, Prabhupada put up the sign, no lazies or crazies allowed. <laughs> so, so therefore Krishna consciousness means activity. Of course we balance those activities with our personal needs, but the activities become the source of our enthusiasm and, and therefore a devotee is happy because they always have some service to do. They're always thinking how to improve. And their minds are always active in the, in the form of do, trying to develop the qualities at the same time staying fixed in their execution of devotional service. Okay, I'll stop there because we have a limited time for the class. Any questions or comments? <laughs> yes. Um, much of Rubo. Um, so there's a little background to my question. If you would kindly explain that, um, from what I've heard you saying today, is that these qualities are not actually belonging to Varna. They're actually Ashram qualities. Yeah. Yeah, because the focus, and this is the Guru's focus, and Prabhupada is founder of Acharya, he focused on trying to create a Brahminical society. Now, every, not everyone can come up to the Brahminical standards, 
But he said, this is where we begin. And once we establish a class of Brahmins, then the Brahmins are teachers for the rest of the society. Like that. And then they can teach people who are inclined to management. Management is Kshatriya. And fighting is Kshatriya. These are the two qualities of the man. Management means well, organization, protection, welfare. P-O-W. POW. That's a manager. He has to take care of the devotees under him. That's called welfare. He has to organize the activities for the yatra or for the temple. At the same time, he has to know fighting skills if there are any attack from outside. These are the kshatriyas. For the vaishyas, they have to be able to support the movement by making money and giving support in a financial way and at the same time protecting cows and uh, performing agricultural activities. Sudras don't need training. They can just assist the rest. So we are not within the Varnas, but we're using the different characteristics and qualities of the Varnas as ways to serve the Lord. And that's the social system, and that was Prabhupada's vision for our society. Unfortunately, we haven't designated people accordingly, but the Brahmins have to teach, that's their, that's their and the Kshatriyas have to organize such a way that the teachings become effective in when they when they're giving out if you have a if you have brahmins but you don't have kshatriyas it's like i can tell you here's here's an example um you come up to me and you say maharaj give me a glass of milk i say there's the cow <laughs> in other words go get it yourself that means there's no organization <laughs> there's no organization but if I have a system, when you ask me for something, then through the system, and what whatever is needed can be easily provided, then, then everything goes on nicely. Same with knowledge. When we, we give knowledge, we ask people to somehow understand it, but then again, the application has to come in a physical way. And that's where the Kshatriyas help organize things where that knowledge becomes practically applied. And then once it's practically applied, it's realized. And once it's realized, then we develop those characteristics and qualities through the realization of application. But if you don't have that system, then you have, you have a, what they call a top-heavy society, a lot of philosophy, but no action on the bottom. <laughs> Everybody is a pundit, but nobody is, nobody's doing anything else. And things just fall through the, through the you know, you know, and things just don't get done, cleanliness doesn't come up, standards don't go up, the deities not worship regularly, cooking doesn't come on time, nothing is organized. You have to have strict organization, Prabhupada said, like a military, and at the same time, you have to be guided by higher knowledge, and that's where the Brahmins give guidance to the Kshatriyas. And the Kshatriyas can take that guidance and apply it according to the situation they find themselves in. And Prabhupada said at least these two quali quali uh, two, these two categories of people must be there, otherwise our society can't function. And that's why we've always had trouble for the years. We've always been very Brahminical, but the organizational areas of our society has been little less lax. So we need good organization. And that way, that maximizes all the efforts of all the other contributions. Yeah. So, but the Brahmins come first because they can teach all other activities. Not that each Brahmin knows everything, but it, collectively the Brahmins should be able to teach everything. <laughs> Like Prabhupada taught us how to wash the floor. <laughs> There's a way of, he actually took a bucket and a rag, got on his hands and knees and showed us. He said, I'm not a floor washer, but I'm showing you how to do it. <laughs> he said, that is the, the duty of a Brahmin to teach. <laughs> Does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. But if one is not a Brahmin, will this verse apply? Uh, 
from those qualities? Well, then you have, you have to see that this is part of the Van Ashram system is to designate people according to their nature. So the next verse says, Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity and leadership are the natural qualities by work to which the Kshatriyas work. So if people are exhibiting more of these type of qualities, then they can be trained in these, in these areas. And then they can be good leaders, and they can be also managers. They can also be good uh, uh, martial artists who teach, who, who can protect the society against outside attacks and influences. Does it mean they won't have the previous described qualities? Hmm? Does it mean that those people will not have the previous described qualities? Well, those other qualities can infiltrate all parts, especially like cleanliness has to be there for everyone. Honesty should be there for everyone. Peacefulness, self-control, like that. Um, knowledge, wisdom. And I would say the Kshatriyas also have to have some knowledge of the Shastra. But higher wisdom may also go, should come from the Brahmanas. And that resource is part of the whole organization. If the, if the Kshatriyas don't take guidance from the Brahmanas, then you, you can have, you know, you find that things can go amiss. <laughs> they can't see the whole thing. But Brahmins can, are meant to see the, the whole picture and give advice. Although they may not be participants, they're advisors. But some of these qualities, as we mentioned, do filter into everyone because we are Vaishnavas above all of these other uh, Varna designations. Our first duty is Vaishnava. So these are Vaishnava qualities. But more or less according to your service. Austerity is there, yeah. Self-control, if you're not self-controlled, you can't do anything. Peacefulness, if the mind is disturbed, no matter what service you're doing, it won't, you know, you won't be able to execute it nicely. Purity, mean cleanliness, tolerance, they're there for all, the, all of the ashrams, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Vrindavan Nath Prabhu, yeah. My question is that uh, in all these qualities, uh, humility is not mentioned. Is this because it's a very basic quality? In yeah, it's, that's a quality for everyone. Lord Chaitanya made that as a foundation for the execution of devotional service. Srinadapi Sani Chena was the first thing. It's also mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita out of the 20 items of knowledge, amanitvam, adambitvam, ahimsam, arjivam. The first is uh, humility. Humility is so glorious that it is almost bhakti in itself. Those who have, those who are humble, they're actually, they actually attract the attention of the Lord. Mm. Mm. But humility has to be practiced. It's not simply an external characteristic. It has to be shown in the execution of devotional service. And that's a whole class to describe what is humility. But the basic quality of humility is not to be wanted, not to want to be honored by others. And that is the main, main statement. And full dependence on the mercy of the Lord. That's humility. Not, um, I'm depending on all my so-called good qualities to get things done, but that's, that's material, and that's faulty. I have whatever good qualities I have, I offer them to the Lord, and by His mercy, everything works out. That's humility. Okay, so should, I think we should stop here. Yeah, okay. Thank you very The Brahmins, they listen to the Kshatriyas, see? <laughs> that was the best part of the class. <laughs>
So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.